Hey, bro, we're gonna watch History Dose. Ten minutes. Learn some shit, nigga. What is you talking about? Medieval Chronicles. Hold on. Claim terrible storms and fire breathing dragons appeared over the British land of Northumbria in the spring of 793. These being the hellish harbingers of the Dang, we even hear the bells in here? God damn. fate that would befall the brothers of a monastery perched on the quiet isle of Lindisfarne. Such mystical embellishment provided some post hoc logic to the very real next chapter in this history. We're about to watch Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but real life. The heathens are coming. Foreign longships loom just offshore. Shields, spears, axes clatter as bearded men swarm the monastery. Doors are splintered. Spears plunged into the backs of fleeing monks. Blood Nothing killed. <laughs> Nothing killed. Niggas running. Dang. Battered chapels are gutted for relics and precious metals. As swiftly as they arrived, that nigga in the middle really got clapped. <laughs> arrived, the Vikings vanish over the horizon. Medieval chroniclers believe this is a punishment from God, an attack on Christianity itself by bloodthirsty pagans. Yet the motives of these raiders can only be understood here. Y'all yeah, blame God for random white people? That's crazy. In flame-lit mead halls over hearty meals, Scandinavian chieftains sit upon their thrones, courting the loyalty of brave warriors. Norse faith and warrior tradition strengthen these bonds, but loyalty must ultimately be bought. Shining metals, fine jewelry, and other valuables plundered in raids can be immediately distributed amongst followers as gifts, or first exchanged with merchants for exotic curios like fine French wines and exquisite Chinese silks. The trading barter, y'all know the trading barter. Vikings will also capture countless people in their raids, holding important individuals for ransom and turning others into their household slaves or reluctant wives. Still, others will be torn. Wives? Dang, yo, was Thomas Jefferson in the room? ...from their homelands and traded to slavers in the bustling markets of Venice and Baghdad, destined to toil away the rest of their days in lands as remote as Egypt and Central Asia. This material and human loot drives Viking raids. The young farm-based Scandinavians who have chosen to clamber aboard... Wait, so they sold people into slavery because it made the most money that's crazy mm -mm. it's in the dna dragon ships and take part in treacherous raiding overseas seek the chance to prove their valor and secure a future for themselves and their families thus the more plundered gifts offered by a chieftain the more followers will flock to him and the more plundering he can accomplish these unique dynamics and power struggles in scandinavian So it's like 11.30, I'm supposed to be in bed right now. Okay, I'm, trying to figure which part, I'm sorry, I was trying to figure out which part was the lane and which part was the sea. Yeah, I'm Spark an era of relentless raids on foreign soil. Versatile longships allow hit-and-run Viking attacks that will ravage medieval coastlines. In the coming centuries, kingdoms will fall, great cities will be drained of their wealth, and land will be conquered. But the Vikings aren't invincible, and not every place will be as ill-guarded as the monastery on Lindisfarne. I, that was a perfect call. I don't even remember what I was going to say. Anymore. A troubling message reaches the court of Amir Abdelrahman II. 54 Viking longships have appeared outside of Lisbon. After attacking the coasts of France and northern Spain, the raiders have arrived in the Umayyad Emirate of Cordoba. What did you just say? The Vikings waste little time. They overrun Lisbon, killing, burning, and loading slaves and treasures onto their ships. The men of the north then unleash the same destruction on Cadiz and Medina Sidonia before wading into the Guadalquivir River toward the crown jewels of Seville in the sprawling capital of Cordoba. 
It's here in the capital that Abdal Rahman II faces an existential moment. The safest way to survive a Viking raid is to give them what they want. In the wake of the devastating Viking occupation of Paris, the Frankish King Charles the Bald will bequeath 6,000 pounds of silver and gold before the invaders leave. 6,000 pounds? Franco the Bald? It's just too much, too much. But paying them off comes with an added price. Vikings who extract tribute once will come back for more. Many Irish, English, and the Sami of northern Scandinavia will cough up enormous annual tributes in exchange for peace. Abdel Rahman II decides he will call on local Muslim chieftains, old rivals and uneasy allies, to band together and drive off the common enemy. But the Vikings... They clapped him. You can, you can say a white man, they clapped him. Vikings ...have moved with vicious haste. They break into Seville and overwhelm its defenses. Traumatized survivors flee into the mountains, while the invaders launch fire arrows at mosques and pillage the city for another week. Each day, the Scandinavian raiders carry off loot, and reinforcements arrive from their ships. The Viking invasion force grows in power. It's in Clapping. the dead of night in a village overlooking Seville that a cobbled together army assembles. These skilled cavalry and hardened warriors have answered Abdul Rahman's call to fight. Okay, hold it again, shit. Hold it again, shit. When at last dawn breaks, thousands of Vikings march out of Seville, intent on sacking another nearby city. Then the stampede of Muslim troops ambushes them. They slaughter the detachment of Vikings and drive the others out of Seville. The Vikings respond with a handful of bloody victories, but a few costly losses. Hold on, hold on a gang shit, hold on a gang shit. Then, as Viking ships stream down the river, catapults rain onto them a napalm-like substance called Greek fire. The searing inferno incinerates dozens of longships and the men still on board. Surviving Scandinavians are forced to sell back their prisoners and retreat in haste. Along the Spanish coastline, the victors hang 400 Viking captives from palm trees. A really? grisly warning to would-be invaders. Viking raids thrive on regional division and unrest between kingdoms, but here a swift collective response has saved the emirate. The Vikings... Strength in numbers, ladies and gentlemen. Whole lot of gang shit. ...for their part have lived up to their reputation. Cities are ruined and the bloodshed is substantial. It's clear to Abdel Rahman that the best way to survive a Viking raid is to stop it in its tracks. He commissions a massive new standing fleet and equips his coastline with watchtowers and a system of messengers. Yet over a decade after the first attack, the intrepid Hasting and Bjorn Ironside lead another Viking fleet down the Spanish coast. The Vikings again arrive at the mouth of the Guadalquivir, mm -hmm. but this time the new Cordoban fleet sails out to block them. For the shrewd, profit-minded Vikings, the risk of costly battle is too great. They sail off to sack the capital of another emirate in northern Morocco, and then ravage southern France in Italy. They take home a massive hoard of treasure. My nigga said, hey, we ain't gonna fuck with y'all. We gonna hit up with other niggas. They said, well, it was good. It was good. They big body them. Dang. That's crazy, y'all punks. Here, one might ask who finally defeats the mighty Vikings and puts a stop to their raids. America. The bands of independent Scandinavians blitzing coastlines seem unstoppable. But the world is changing. In the new millennium, Europe increasingly organizes under more stable monarchies, capable of raising formidable counterattacks to Viking incursions. Scandinavia will also centralize. Great kings consolidate the power of Viking chieftains and establish Christian kingdoms that pursue more conventional means of trade and conquest. Ooh, please pass the mic. Please. I'm sorry. In truth, the Vikings don't fall to any conqueror. They evolve. 
the brutal and fascinating Viking raids deserve a deeper dive, and that's why you should watch the oh, wonderfully shit, gritty okay. documentary Sigurd Bjornsson Viking Exile on Magellan TV right now. It's part of their Warrior's Way original. I thought he was promoting the other show, but there ain't no way I did me like that. I don't know why I watched the shit. It was hella entertaining, though. Hella entertaining. 